Hello, good evening students. Again, come back to the YouTube channel. So, you know, class 6 standard students, basically, I hope you all are well. Um, you are staying at home. So, a couple of main points. So, I was uh, telling about the first chapter of class 6 standard, that food. So, come to the next part, which is edible parts of the plants edible parts of the plants it was your main keyword the second main keyword it was that edible parts of the plants so which are called the edible parts of the plants edible means actually eatable eatable or edible both are same so edible parts of the plants means the parts of a plant which we can eat properly are known as edible parts of the plant so let's see the board I have already written over here edible parts of the plants. The parts of the plants which are eatable are called edible parts of the plant. The parts of the plants which are eatable are known as edible parts of the plant. Like one example I have given over here. In a mango tree, the edible part is its fruit. In the mango tree that you all know, I hope you know. So you all know that the, the mango tree, the edible part is its fruit. So, edible parts like not only that fruit, basically for uh, all the plants or for all the trees, we are uh, taking the fruit as its edible or eatable part for maximum plants, but then also more plants are there, not only the fruit we can eat, but also other parts we can take as uh, you can eat actually. So let's see what are the parts. Its stems, its roots, its leaves, its seeds, flowers, and fruits already mentioned. So what are the rest of the part? Like stems, roots, leaves, seeds, flowers, and fruits. I'm not saying that for all the plant or for all the trees we can take all the parts, but Different, different plants or trees we can take these these parts not at uh, all together but in different different trees or plants we can take these parts as eatable or edible part so now few plants are two or more edible parts already mentioned what i already mentioned that not only a single part we can take from one particular plant more than one part we can take it as a food like seeds of mustard plant give us oil from the seeds of mustard plant we can take oil or we can get oil and leaves are used as vegetables so see here we have got two parts from the mustard plant like its seeds from where we can get the oil and leaves are used as vegetables same way we can mention more examples like banana plant from banana plant, three parts we can take. We can get from banana plant its uh, uh, like flower that in Bengali it is called uh, mocha. And after that, when it becomes mature, we can get the fruit as banana. Then its stem we can also take as a part or edible part, like it is called in Bengali tho. Next, one more example: pumpkin plants. Lot of parts we can take, or lot of parts of this pumpkin plant we can eat, like its um, flower that is called in Bengali kumro food. We can take after maturation of that flower, it becomes pumpkin in Bengali kumro. So, as a fruit, we can take. Then, inside the fruit, we can get the seeds, means pumpkin seeds, we can also take. In spite of that, we can get as a food eats all the stem, leaves, branches as a vegetable. So you can see four or five parts of this pumpkin plant we can get as an edible or eatable part. So these are called the edible or eatable parts. Many more examples are possible. I have given already two and three. To search in your other books, in names, you will get more and more examples. So now one more table that is table number two as a homework we have to do it so let's see the table this is table number two which is also from 
your NCRT book. See, I have mentioned edible parts, name of the plants. So see, I have mentioned one scale. So you have to mention the name of the plants which can be eaten, means name of the plants of those particular plants, the stem we can eat. You have to mention the names of those plants. See, I have already mentioned one example like stem, like potato, onion, and sugarcane. For such type of plants, we eat basically they are stems as an edible part. So here I have mentioned roots, leaves, seeds, flowers, and fruits. So you have to mention the name of the plants or names of the plants of those plants roots can be eaten leaves can be eaten seeds flowers and fruits can be eaten as edible part so this table we have to fill it after that i mentioned one more most important keyword from this chapter it was sprouted seeds it was sprouted seeds. So, what are called first of all sprouts? What are called sprouts? Generally, germinated seeds are called sprouts. Germinated seeds are called sprouts, which can be eaten as raw or cooked. So, sprouted seeds or germinated seeds are known as sprouts, and it can be eaten as raw or cooked. Examples I have mentioned for you broccoli sprouts, mustard sprouts, clover sprouts, clover means in Bengali, lavongo. Then sprouted chickpeas means chola, very uh, renowned sprouted seed, chickpeas. Then lentils sprouts, lentils mean dal, mushu dal, like this. So these things can be eaten. Is this sprouts actually can be eaten as raw or cooked? So now the main question arises that how are seeds sprouted? How are seeds sprouted? See, the process of sprouting involves soaking and draining excess water and leaving those seeds till they germinate. Again, I'm saying. The process of sprouting involves soaking and draining excess water and leaving those seeds till they germinate. So actually, uh, for germination of seeds, the basically the things required like proper uh, conditions are required to get a seed germinate. Like proper uh, warmth is required. Then. Uh, to germination of seed that you know if any seed will fall on the ground or on the soil the proper uh, conditions physical conditions are required like light rays sun rays proper air then warmth then water these things are required for germination that you know the term germination in the last class from there you can recall that what is called germination so now just i will explain at your home how you can germinate the seeds how you can make the sprouts basically. So from your anxiety book, activity number five, from the first chapter, activity number five, if you learn properly, read out the activity properly, you can get to know about that, the sprouts. So first, what you have to do, I'm just explaining here. First, you have to take, first you have to take one bowl or one container. Then you have to take little bit amount of quantity of like chana or dal of these sprouts um, of these seeds in that container. Then take water or fill the bowl or vessel with water. Clear? Then keep it aside. After the day or the next day. First, you drain the water from that bowl or container. Afterwards, you have to what you have to do? You have to take one wet cloth and you have to wrap all those uh, seeds inside that cloth. Then again, keep it aside. 
for next day wait for the next day and next day you observe all the seeds properly any changes are there or not if you can see any white structure from that seeds or from those seeds are coming out from those seeds any white structure that means the seeds are sprouted but if you can't see don't get worried what you have to do that time you have to wash those seeds with clean water properly again drain the water same way then again wrap all those seeds with a wet cloth and keep it aside wait for the next day then next day you open the wrappings wrap of the cloth obviously inside that cloth you will see the sprouted or germinated seeds means called sprouts now these sprouts you can eat it you can eat as raw or what you can do or with some spices after boiling those sprouts add some spices with that and you can enjoy the tasty food as snacks so i hope you all have understand well so wait for my next class thank you stay safe stay healthy so today after this thank you